Yo, what's up guys? It's your boy Franklin here and today we got ourselves a brand new update video in regards to PK Hex. So for those of you who are watching my previous PK Hex video, uh, this one's going to be a little different. I'm just going to summarize the majority of the stuff that has been completely changed in correspondence to the Teal Mask DLC. So of course we got new Pokemon, we got interesting stuff to talk about as well. And before we get right into it, please like and subscribe. And as a disclaimer, this is just for educational purposes. I'm not going to show you guys how you can hack your Switch. I'm not going to show you guys how you can get these Pokemon into your Switch. There's a way to do it. I highly suggest checking online. You've been fairly warned. Because if I see in the comments, I'm going to get pretty upset. The reason why I say that is because uh, YouTube and Nintendo are trying to strike down a bunch of videos. So they've done it to me before. And I really don't want to walk that path again. So, all right. Now we got that out of the way. Let's get right into it. So, the biggest thing, uh, pretty much when we look at any Pokemon that we transfer from Pokemon Home into Scarlet and Violet, the home tracker has to be legit. If you decide to generate a Pokemon that does not exist in Scarlet and Violet and it's considered illegal, so say for example, I generate... I want to see a perfect example from here. I think Urshifu was a pretty damn good example. So this Urshifu, for example, it has the home tracker 000, even though it says it was generated in Scarlet and Violet. Now, you're not going to see that because the met data is completely different. But if you transfer this Urshifu into Pokemon Home, specifically in the Pokemon Home mobile version, there's supposed to be a Pokeball that shows up in correspondence to what this Urshifu is all about. If it doesn't have the Pokeball, that means one thing, or two things. One, Pokemon Home just flagged your Pokemon as probably being not legal. And two, you can potentially get banned. Now, I don't know about the banned portion because everyone's stories have been quite different. Just in general, as a precaution... If you're going to want to generate your Pokemon, for example, Urshifu, do not generate it and then straight up put it in Scarlet and Violet. Generate it in your Sword and Shield copy, transfer it to Home, then transfer it to Scarlet and Violet, and you will see this Home Tracker thing being populated with the correct factual data. This was mainly the reason why a bunch of VGC players got disqualified in Worlds. You guys remember that was a pretty big Pokemon news back then. Well, back then, it was like a month ago. But, again, if you want a Pokemon, generate it in its actual game. Generation 8 onward. It gets a little complicated with Generation 7 because Generation 7 requires the use of Pokemon Bank and then Pokemon Home and all that stuff. But just be careful. So, for example, this Landris that I ended up transferring from Pokemon Home would have the correct home tracker and, of course, the encryption constant it's unique to its own but home tracker is also unique as well so i transferred it from sword and shield i'm pretty sure this one actually came from ultra sun so it makes sense that makes perfect sense everything's legal i got the green check there you go now we're going to talk about the new pokemon that were released if you want to gen monkey dory you can technically gen it with six ivs and there's not going to be a problem of course if you take it to a tournament and people look at that and you know, you know it's kind of suspicious <laughs> same thing with okie dokie 31 ivs straight up across you can do that pheasantipity same thing as well uh this one obviously has its ivs not 31s but if i were to change it it'd still be legal i'll just show you guys that right now to prove that you're not going to get flagged by PK Hex. If your stuff does get flagged by PK Hex, more than likely, if you try to use this online or get put in Pokemon Home, it's going to get banned and you don't want to take a risk. Because Lord knows what Pokemon is doing nowadays to, you know, track people down. So now we're going to get into the interesting stuff. And that is the Ursaluna Blood Moon. So, Ursaluna Blood Moon is a static counter and it requires... Three perfect IVs. Whatever you catch in game is the correct and legal way. Of course, duh. But let's say 
you want a 6 IV Ursa Luna Blood Moon. You do that, it's legal. Perfect. 31, legal. Perfect. And so all of them are going to be perfectly legal. Now, of course, you want to. You cannot change the original terror typing. If you do that, you're going to get flagged for it. Why? It's because it wasn't the terror type when it's initially captured. It's going to be normal type. Perfect. Now, there was a previous uh, update where you weren't able to do this, per se, because supposedly PKHex flags it down, but I guess they must have fixed it over the past couple of hours or days, however long this update was. So that's cool. Good to go. Again, make sure all your Pokemon are legal. Make sure all the moves are legit. You can learn them. Now, when you're generating these Pokemon, of course, their home tracker is going to be zero because they came from the game itself and you haven't put them in Pokemon Home. If you put these in Pokemon Home and you bring them back into Scarlet and Violet, they're going to have a home tracker ID. So that's perfectly legal. If you generate any Pokemon that originates from Scarlet and Violet, and it has the 000 home tracker, that's completely fine. Now we're gonna talk about Ogre Pond. Ogre Pond was another one of these Pokemon that if you change the IVs, it's gonna give you a flag. Now in this situation, there you go. Now, if you see this error, it's gonna say unable to match an encounter from origin game. Why is that? Because now this is the Pokemon where if you change the IVs, you're gonna get flagged. Why? Because of its encounter, you're not able to do that. And if you get this error, you might be thinking, oh, well, if I go to just, you know, the Met, but everything looks fine, what the hell is going on? Well, you see, certain IVs of certain Pokemon can only be that exact amount. If you're having a problem and you want to get rid of this, obviously, you can just overlay the current Ogre Pond you have, and it's going to be legal. But let's say you have this error, and you don't know what to do with it, Randomize the IVs. But then you're still going to have that same problem. So what I really recommend you guys to do is just overlay your current Ogre Pond or catch it in the game. Or, you know, try to get it traded from somebody who's reputable. Again, that also carries its own risks. And there you have it. Ogre Pond needs to be at least 31 IVs for three stats. If I was you, just if you have the DLC, just catch you know each of the new Pokemon like one time and then if you have access to Pika Hex and all that cool stuff you know try to play with it and see whether or not you can do legal stuff I already showed you guys what you can do you know Mukidori all the, the loyal three of course they can technically have maxed IVs Ursa Luna used to not let me do this which is why you guys see the IVs being all funky wonky over here and then I click on the air on the check mark and it's completely legal but for Ogre Pond, you cannot do that. So, again, just be very careful with that. Other than that, I think that's pretty much it. So, again, just to summarize. If you want a Pokemon to have the home tracker, again, bring it from Pokemon Home. If you want a Pokemon that does not come from Scarlet and Violet and you want to generate it, generate it from its original game. Like Urshifu. This Urshifu has the home tracker. Even though it came from Sword and Shield. It was generated in Sword and Shield. Of course, that makes perfect sense. Don't be like other people. <laughs> I'm looking at you, uh, world champion competitors. And bring an Urshifu or whatever Pokemon that you guys were trying to bring into the game. And generate it in Scarlet and Violet. Because that's incorrect. The Urshifu is not found in Scarlet and Violet. It can be transferred. It just cannot be found there. And then lastly, again, Ogre Pond. Ogre Pond needs to have its three IVs. Now, of course, if you want max IVs, I highly recommend bottle caps or gold caps. Make sure you guys do that. And that's pretty much it. That's all there is to it with the new update of PK Hex. Uh, if you guys have any questions, feel free to reference back to my first version of PK Hex for Scarlet and Violet. I'm going to have that at the end of this video. You probably will see it right now. And there you have it. Once again, thank you guys so much. Please like and subscribe. It's your boy Franklin, signing out. Peace.